Hello, Claire. Hello, John. Claire Grogan, <laughs> formerly of Altered Images. Mind you, you're still with them, aren't you? Yes, yeah, sort of. Yeah. This is Jill. Hi there. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Jill, but I'm, you know, only wanted Claire Grogan. Who, uh, oh, what? sorry. Why are you here, if you don't mind me asking? Well, Claire can't play guitar. Of course, you're carrying the guitar. Come on in, then. Thank you. Have you got the tequila ready? <sighs> Claire, no, I haven't. But we do have a nice musical welcome for you. Oh, let's press the button. Uh, you can go through to the lounge if you like, Jill. Make yourself comfortable. OK. Yep. Right, Claire. <gasps> the nets have been washed. The sofa cushions plumped. The air freshener refill activated. All with biscuits and tea. I trust you'll agree. Your visit has been anticipated. Oh, welcome to John Shuttleworth's Lounge Music. Welcome to John Shuttleworth's Lounge Music. <gasps> what do you think? It nearly brought a tear to my eye. That is a very warm welcome, I tell you. Well, thank you, Claire. I'm, I was quite pleased with it myself. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Mary. Right. Um, I'm off out now, John. Right. Uh, Claire, this is my wife, Mary. <clears throat> How do you do, Mary? Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, love. But you'll have to excuse me, because I'm going out for the night. <gasps> That's right. A uh, friend of Mary's, Doreen Melody, uh, celebrating a birthday. And uh, Yeah. That's right. So Mary's going to a party. Oh. Well, it's not really a party. Um, we're just going for something to eat at the pub. Well, you say that, love, but uh, it's a fantastic deal tonight, isn't it? Mm. Because it's steak night, Claire. And uh, yep, it is. you can have two steaks and with all the trimmings <clears throat> and a complimentary bottle of house wine yep. for um, £18.50. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah, that yeah. sounds um, very reasonable. Yeah. Mm. We'll maybe join you later, Mary. Oh, I see. Well, it's fortuitous that you should say that, Claire, because we were hoping you might go and wish Doreen Melody happy birthday through the medium of song. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because you sang a song called Happy Birthday, well, didn't you? Well, if she can afford it, I'll be there. Oh, I see. <laughs> right, well, very nice to meet you, Claire. Bye, Mary. Maybe catch you later. All right. Mm. I was only joking about the money thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. You do it You do it for free? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come through into the lounge, Claire. You all right there, Jill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be with you shortly. No problem. Right. So how long have you been here, John? Um, who's interviewing who? Sorry, I can't. No, sorry, I'm right. a very bossy I'll... Scottish person. Are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we born in the Gorbals. I wasn't born in the Gorbals. I was born in Garnet Hill, which is where the Glasgow School of Art is. And um, it's right in the centre of Glasgow, and it's the most beautiful building. Did you grow up near the spaghetti factory? No. Or you were a waitress? Uh, I, I, I went to school near the spaghetti factory, yeah. and I used to have a part-time job after school there. So I, I'd get, I'd walk down from school, change into my spaghetti factory uniform, which was a red shirt and blue jeans, mm. and get busy. And was one of your customers uh, film director Bill Forsyth? He was, yes. Yeah, because he, he came in and uh, wanted you to be Gregory's girl. Well, he, he he was a bit of a regular at the restaurant, although I had never really noticed him before. And then one night when he was leaving the restaurant, he said to me, I'm going to be making a movie. Or he actually said film. Nobody in Glasgow would see movie. Uh, oh. I'm going to be making a film um, this summer, and I think it would be great to have you in it. Um, can I take a contact number for you? And I said, no. Well, that's because right, you shouldn't do. Exactly. John. You don't know who he is. No. <laughs> Could have been anybody. So I said, well, that all sounds great, but um, you know where I am, and if it happens, get in touch. And obviously he did get in touch because it did happen. Uh, you were in Gregory's Girl. Fantastic film. Thank you. Um, that lad was a bit funny. That, the, the gangly one, what's he called? John Gorgeous Sinclair. Is it gorgeous? Oh, he's is a he? lovely man. Is he uh, like that in real life, though? Because he left the toothbrush on, didn't he? <laughs> so I was, I was appalled when I saw that because uh, all the gadgets wasting the battery. Now, Claire, yes. I've not offered you a drink, and uh, I can only apologise for that. Would you like a little bottle of water? Because you see, young ladies like them, don't they? They do. I do like some water. I also like a cup of tea. Would that stretch you too far? <sighs> I'm afraid it would, Claire. And Jill is warming up. 
So, you know, it's time for your first number. Okay. And then I'm going to sing one of my songs. And then later, Claire, uh, we'll get to sing one of each other's. Fine. Yeah, very exciting format here on John Shuttleworth's Lounge Music. Um, oh, I'll just play the jingle. Show us what you can do. Ooh, bang that tabor, blow that kazoo, strum that lute, toot that flute. You're a famous star, it's true. So show us what you can do. Claire Grogan. <laughs> show us what you can do. I'll do my best. Yep, good luck. the wrong tune. Happy birthday, happy birthday. I'm not sure Doreen would appreciate this. Oh, maybe she would. Happy, happy birthday in a hot bath to those nice, nice nights. I remember always, always I got such a fright. Seeing them in my dark cupboard with my great big cake If they were me, if they were me And I wish you, and I wish you If they were me, if they were me And I wish you, and I wish you If they were me and I wish you Would you like to listen to? Happy birthday in a hot bath to those nice, nice nights I remember always, always I got such a fright Seeing them in my dark cupboard with my great big cake If they were me, if they were me And I wish you, and I wish you If they were me, if they were me And I wish you if they were me and I was you, would you like to puzzle too? Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Yeah, <clears throat> very good, Claire and Jill. Thank you. Though I'm, I did enjoy that song, I do feel the the original <laughs> tune of Happy Birthday is just slightly better. <gasps> Why did you not consider just using the tune that's already there? Happy Birthday, do you know what I mean? Everyone knows that one. I know, but I just wanted to offer the public an alternative. That was all, that was my yeah. thinking behind oh. it. Fair enough. But there's a funny lyric about being in the cupboard. What, what's all that about? <laughs> I don't, you know, I've never explained the lyrics because I think everybody should have their own interpretation of them. But I will tell you that when I first joined the band and they said, listen, you're going to have to help write the songs, I was like, what? I can't write songs. And I started thinking about really old songs and actually um, nursery rhymes and how they sound really sweet that there's a dark element to a lot of those old-fashioned nursery rhymes. Yeah. And I thought there was something quite interesting about that. So that kind of, that was my little bit of inspiration. So a lot of the altered images songs are not quite what they seem. Because a lot of them are quite jolly and happy and upbeat. But there's a little dark message in there. There's a little dark cupboard even in Happy yeah. Birthday. Yeah. Jill, now, I'm not being rude, but we would like to, um, I, I want to talk to Claire alone. Okay. Uh, for a while. No problem. Before you perform again. So, what do you want to do? You can go upstairs and sit on the edge of a bed? or um... <laughs> I'll take <laughs> the dog out a walk. Oh, do you mind? No problem. That would be lovely. She's called Kirsty. And, uh, yep, here's a lead. Thanks. Have you got, oh. Have you got um, the poop bags? That's right, Claire. Well anticipated. You need a little bag now, don't you? Mm -hmm. Oh, here's one. <laughs> Thanks, uh, John. Thank you, Jill. Yeah. Go and take her out. Oh, bless you. See yeah, you um, later. Not too far, Jill, just round the block. Yeah, bye. Bye. Right, it's time now for another jingle. 
Do you like that, Claire? That's a good beat. Can I dance? Ooh, if you want to. <laughs> oh, it's my turn to shine. Not the sun or the moons or Martin Clunes. It's my turn to shine. So let the stage be mine. Oh, it's my turn to shine. It's my turn to shine. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to believe that that's um, a machine. It sounds like the best harpist in the world. Anyway, um, I hope you like this one. This is like a, a traditional Irish drinking song. Okay. Um, or it could be Scottish, mm -hmm. but I've called it untraditional drinking song because I want to do Kayleys and I'm hoping that this number will get me on the Kayleigh circuit okay. join in when you feel confident when you next get oh start again <laughs> I love a false start oh, yeah please Claire <laughs> and there's another one yeah here we go when you next buy what catches your eye and you're worried that you've overspent spare a thought for those who have naught and can't even afford the rent When you lie in bed, pillow under your head And outside it's windy and dark, and dark. Spare a thought for those who have sought <gasps> A bed on a bench in the park, in the park. Oh, And they say my glass is neither half empty nor is it ever half full You may think this means I have plenty I like your drunk auntie. That my life <laughs> is <laughs> wonderful Listen to the wonderful. lyrics, Claire, please If you think that you are a numpty yes. For I have no life, alas My glass isn't half full or half empty, empty. For I haven't I even it. got a I glass um, The tuning wasn't great there, was it? Yeah, I love it I once had a glass, it was more than half full Never half empty at all But I woke one morning and my glass had gone and That's when I started to fall I saw it one day, my glass all in pieces I thought I could mend it with glue I worked for a week, then it started to leak and That's why I'm here telling you Oh, oh, my glass is neither half empty, nor is it ever half full. You may think that means I have plenty, that my life is wonderful. If you think that you are a naughty, I have no life, alas. My glass isn't half full or half empty, for I haven't even got a glass. No, I haven't even got a glass. Harmony. I haven't even got a glass. Claire, you just ruined my song. I That's didn't do that my to, job. I didn't do that to yours. I'm very sorry, John, but I'm not very good at singing other people's songs. And you had the lyrics and the music in front of you, and I had nothing. And I'd say that was a bit unfair and actually a bit rude to a guest. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I better get that, Claire. I can't do harmonies. I'm a lead singer. Oh, dear. Oh, can. Don't talk to me, John. I'm having a terrible evening. I see. Oh. Sounds like you haven't got a glass. What? Uh, can I come in? I need to sit down. Oh, very well. Go through into the lounge, Ken. Thank you. Oh, Ken. Oh, hello. This is Claire. Hello, Ken. It's really lovely oh. to meet you. Yes. Hello, love you. All right. Ken's my next door oh. neighbour and sole agent, Claire. Oh. Hmm. I represent John. I've yep. had the most horrendous last half hour. Oh, no? Yes. Uh, I'd arranged to meet a lady called Tina, who's an ancillary cleaner at the solicitors. Oh. And what happened? Um, well, she didn't turn up. She blew me out. Oh. Um, but then Joan Chitty came in, oh. and uh, she felt sorry for me, and said she'd take me to the pub. Oh. You know, suddenly it was like I had a date, because she put me, her arm around me, oh. and she was consoling me, and it was, you know, it was oh. lovely. Oh. But we got to this pub, and then... Uh, 
She saw Mary and some other ladies, mm. and she just abandoned me completely. Oh, dear. And then um, I had to go and move Doreen Melody's camper van, <gasps> because Doreen, it's her birthday, apparently. Yes, Ken, we know. Because she'd had one too many. She couldn't move the van herself, but she needed to get it off the busy street. Right. Mm. Because That's... she had some CDs in the back, yeah. and... Uh, some vegetables Ooh. that uh, yeah. were still in character. She'd been to the supermarket. Yeah. That's by the way. Yes. Uh -huh, anyway, it. I drove round and round and I couldn't find a suitable parking space. Mm -hmm. Busy time. So I've ended up back here, John, and I hope you don't mind, John, but I've parked um, the camper van right outside your house. What? No. Oh, Ken. I'm sorry. That's fantastic news. Oh, there it is. Ooh. Oh, Excuse me, Claire. Oh. I've got to go and have a look at uh, Doreen's camper van. Because it's got a sturdy chrome ladder. Yes. Which gives direct access to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall we all go? No, Claire. Please stay and listen to the end of my story. Okay. So I'd had two dates that hadn't worked out. <gasps> no, three. Because Doreen was getting a bit amorous with me. Ooh. And, um, and now it looked like I'd been dumped again. And here I am suddenly with you. <laughs> but hang on. Are you Claire Grogan? It's Clogger, of course it is. It's Claire Grogan. <laughs> I remember now, John said you were coming to, right. to be on the show. Well, you were Gregory's girl. Well, that's debatable. I was one of his girls. Well, you were the last one. <laughs> it must be fate. <laughs> um, Claire, it must be... That has brought us together like this. Do you not see? This is fate. I mean, the coincidences are too strong. OK. And uh, can I invite you on a date? Be Ken's girl, just for tonight. <laughs> I can take you to the finest restaurant in town where you can get a steak, a lovely steak, and you get, I'll buy you a bottle of wine. Yes. It'll be absolutely fantastic. Okay. And no expense spared. All right. Well, you know, I, I've been thinking that my life does need spiced up a little bit, so you're on. Oh. Uh, hang on, Ken. I heard what you said then. What? Claire, you've been duped. What? He's proposing... Uh, that's not an expensive meal. He's, pro he's proposing to take you to the... Um, the steak night, 1850, uh -huh. for, for two steaks and a oh. cheap bottle of wine. You don't want that, do you? Well, I don't get out very much, so I'm thinking it might be ah. quite nice. You see, John? <laughs> well, it's highly unorthodox. <laughs> oh, who's this? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to take this, Claire, and leave you with Ken. Uh, I'll see you shortly. Okay. Take your time, John. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, John. Uh, it's Nick Lowe here. Aha! Top tips on the telephone Direct from Hollywood to my home The stars get on the dog and bone For top tips on the telephone Thanks for calling, Nick. Um, yes, I, I wanted you to give us some tips on uh, how to record demos because you've done a lot of production, haven't you? In the past, I you know. have in the past, yeah. yeah. Presumably, Nick... To be a good producer, you've got to have um, a good pair of ears. But yours must be damaged because you've listened repeatedly to um, Breaking Glass, haven't you? Is that right? Because you like the sound of it, don't you? Well. Because you had a song called I Love the Sound of Breaking Glass. Me and my no, wife Mary no, I, I, couldn't I, I, believe that yeah. one. You know, why <laughs> would anyone like it? By, by that, John. No, I, I, I did spend three years in front of Dave Edmonds' amplifier, though. That didn't help matters. <laughs> no. Is that rock pile? Yeah, that was a uh, yes. I was in a group called Rock Pile, and we we did a lot of tours of America, which were mm. um, quite quite loud. You uh, produced the first five albums by Elvis Costello, didn't you? I did, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, for me, his voice is a bit raspy, and uh, you know, I'd be tempted as a producer to put earplugs in, but then, of course, you've got a problem, haven't you? You won't be able to monitor him. Yes, yeah. yeah, that that would be that would be tr tricky. Didn't you record uh, Johnny Cash as well? I did. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I did did record him. I had that was, that was in the days when I used to have a little uh, studio in my house, and uh, he came round. I was uh, so he could help himself to tea and coffee without asking. Yes. D difficult yeah, yeah, to control. He, yes, he he could help himself. And did he? Oh yes, liberally. Oh, but uh, the thing with Johnny. I know he's very famous, but for me, his voice was always too low. Did, did you not try and encourage him to sing in a higher register? Well, uh, I, I did try and get him uh, to, to sing in a higher register, but he didn't take any notice of me. I see. Just went off and made himself another coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
on to tape piss now. It's a big problem for me and a, a lot of demo enthusiasts. D does Dolby have to be employed? Or are there other ways around it? Oh. Well, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm afraid you've got me there, John. I oh. I have the faintest idea. <laughs> Haven't you? Thought you were a producer. Well, I know, but I always kind of... I, I was never really a, 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 a producer. I just sort of decided I'd have a go at it one day. And... and um, oh. Oh. And I and I I got lucky, and uh, in in those days the producer didn't really do much at all, except um, sort of crack a few jokes and and wave their arms around a bit, and Ooh. and sort of get them at it, get the get the artists at it. But nowadays they're much more uh, they've got to know much more technical stuff, and um, you know do much more knob twiddling and things like that. And I was uh, not really very good at all that sort of thing. Well, it's lovely speaking to you, and uh, thanks for all the tips. Not yep. at all, John. It was a pleasure. Oh, good. Um, bye. Bye-bye. <sighs> didn't really tell us anything that we didn't know already. Oh, well. Uh, thanks to Nick Lowe. And, uh, oh, I can hear Claire and Jill practising one of my songs. Obviously, Jill's back from a dog walk. Good timing, because uh, we're ready for the next item. <laughs> oh, why are you laughing, Claire? I don't know. I think I'm just a bit nervous. Mm, so am I. But we'll have a lovely time, Claire. Are you still here, Ken? Mm. Look, yes, will I you am. please go out to the camper van and oh. wake Doreen up? No. She's missing a party. All right, John. Uh, I better pop out, Claire. Um, now, listen, you won't blow me out, will you? Uh. I don't want I don't want to be hitchhiking to Caracas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll be there. Happy birthday. What does he mean by that? You're talking to crackers, what does he mean? Well, it's a long story. Have you ever seen Gregory's Girl? Oh, I did see it once, but I can only remember that bit with the toothbrush. <laughs> right, stand by, Claire. <gasps> Under the covers, we're not talking lovers. Cavorting, the thought brings a blush to my cheek. <laughs> Under the covers is a chance to hear others <laughs> Sing my songs and me to sing theirs once a week Off you go She lives in home Though she used to live in Barnsley she took the reaper calmly and decided to relocate. She lives in hope and she's very keen on gardening. She doesn't have a garden, though she does have a garden gate. She lives all alone. The shadow of the peak And when she finds herself on loose hill She only need turn to win her To recover from defeat She lives in home Though she's nothing to live in hope for but she knows she's got to cope or join her husband Pete. She lives in hope. She lives in hope. She lives in. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was. But yeah. sadly, it's almost time to go. Have you enjoyed yourself? I've had a great time, but as I said, don't get out much. No. Well, you did today. I did. You came to Sheffield and you had a little bottle of water. You see, you've nearly finished it. Uh -huh. Going out on a hot date tonight. Yes, and you're not having second thoughts. No, I'm very I'm committed. Really? I'm committed to it. Oh, well, you may live to regret that, but um, if you are going to let him down... Yeah. Do it gently, please, because well, he's had a lot of tragedy in his life, as can. 
he came last on New Faces in 73, that, of course, you know. That would be, that's a blow, isn't it? It certainly was. Been lovely meeting you, Claire. And you, John. Be, yeah. Oh, good. Because we did, we had a little chef at one point, didn't we? When you ruined my song. <laughs> oh, really? I ruined the song, did And I, I thought I was going to have to reject you from the premises. Well, I'm glad you didn't. And No, I wasn't going to do that. I think the sign of great friendship is being able to recover from those awkward moments, don't you? Recover from defeat. Yes. See, we're kindred spirits, you and I. Well, let's see if you th still think that. Let's have some, a medley of altered images songs. Okay. Needs to be quicker, doesn't it? Hang on. Oh. Oh. That's better. <laughs> I could be, oh, <laughs> I would like to climb high in a tree, I could be happy, I could be happy, or go to sky on me holiday, I could be <laughs> happy, oh, it's clever that part, but uh, maybe swim a mile down the Nile, not sure about that, wouldn't make me happy, no. how about this, go to the shoe repair shop to cut a key, I could be happy. No. Not doing it for me, sorry. Oh. Not doing it for All me. All of these things I do. Join him when you feel confident. All, All of these things, things I do. To, to get, get away from you. you. Run away, away run away. away. How, do, how, how can, can I? I? Get away, run away, away how, can how can I? I? Oh, oh, to get escape away, from escape you. from you. That's enough for that one. Don't want to escape. What about this one? I'm happy. He goes, she don't care about you. She don't, don't care about the She don't care about, about the She'll forget yeah, about, about. Oh. oh, what are we doing? I'm in murder in my own sense. You are. Don't talk to, to me about love. Far away to me. That's not the lyrics. To, to me about love. Yesterday, Shadow. Tomorrow, Shadow. Yesterday, Shadow. Don't talk to me about love. Oh, don't talk to me about love. Let's end the medley by singing Happy Birthday to Doreen Melody. Happy birthday happy, to happy. you. No, no, happy no, no, birthday. No, no. no? you sure? Well, happy birthday. Right. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Better, You're right. I'll tell you what, Kai, we've run out of time. Oh, no. So if you wouldn't mind reading the credits. Okay. John Shuttleworth's lounge music was written and performed by Graeme Fellows, with special guests me, Claire Grogan, with my guitarist Jill, and on the telephone, Nick Lowe. The producer was Don Ellis, and it was a chic Ken production for BBC Radio 4. You're a good act for Ken, Claire, because he's quite little. What do you mean? Well, how tall are you? Five foot two. I read it was five foot one. <laughs> Have you grown? Well, we could go back to back if you like. I'll always be taller than you, John. Oh, see. Fighting talk from the girl from Glasgow.